Hi, I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Let's begin. The Flintstones. Stop that gorilla. It was quitting time at the Rockhead and Quarry Construction Company. Fred Flintstone and his pal Barney Rubble were especially eager to knock off work that afternoon. Got your plans all set for this evening, Barney? Fred asked as they drove home. Are you kidding? Uh, Betty and I wouldn't miss tonight's shindig for the world. Uh, after all, there's only one night in the whole year when the Loyal Order of Water Buffaloes holds its annual charity mist ball. You can say that again, pal. Okay, I will, Barney replied cheerfully. There's only one night in the whole year when the Loyal Order of... Will you kindly stop acting like an idiot? Roared Fred. No, seriously, Barney. I have to go rent a costume. Uh, what are you going to wear? A gorilla suit. Gorilla suit, huh? Well, that ought to look real natural on you, Barney. Some people I could name aren't all that far descended from monkeys. <laughs> Fred Flintstone shook all over as he chuckled. Oh, no, who's acting like an idiot? Huffed his pal. Oh, I was just joking, Barney. Tell me, where are you going to get this monkey costume... I mean, gorilla suit. Uh, Betty's got it packed away somewhere uh, up in the attic. Used to belong to my uncle, Two-Ton Tony Rubble. Two-Ton Tony, huh? I remember him. That guy was built like an oversized rock pile. Fred shot a sidelong glance at his friend. Gonna look kind of big on you, won't it, Barney? Uh, no problem. Uh, Betty can either take it in, or else I'll stuff it with paper. Something like that. Hey, what's that up ahead? Fred asked, slowing down. Looks like a roadblock. What's going on, officer? We're on the lookout for two escaped convicts. They just busted out of the rock for pen. Who are they? Said Fred. A couple of real hardened criminals. Slingshot Sam and Kid Blaster. It'll be easy enough to spot them if they're still wearing saber-toothed prison stripes. Put in Barney. No such luck. Said the cop. A lady reported that they raided her clothesline and got away with her hobby's business skins. At that moment, the two cons were skulking among the visitors at the Bedrock Zoo. We can't hide out here forever, Sam, muttered Kid Blaster. It's almost closing time. The guards will be clearing the place out soon. Hey, that gives me an idea, said Slingshot Sam. Let's lie low when they close up. Then swipe the zookeeper's keys, unlock the cages, and turn all the animals loose. What for? You want us to get trampled to death by the thundering herd? No, dummy. I want to start such a ruckus that every cop in town will have his hands full rounding up the escaped animals. Get it? Hey, that's brilliant, pal. It'll not only leave us a clear field to make our getaway, we may even have time to pull a job or two before we lamb out of town. Slingshot Sam snickered and slapped his partner on the back. That's my boy, kid. Half an hour later, the police got the first alarm. Hey, Chief, all the animals just got loose from the Bedrock Zoo, and they're spreading out in all directions. Better flash an all-points bulletin, Sarge, and start calling in every uh, off-duty cop on the force. Nobody spotted the two escaped cons as they slunk through the streets. 
Suddenly, Kid Blaster noticed a poster announcing the Water Buffalo's Masked Ball. Wow! Get a load of that, Sam! What about it? A big masked ball is being held tonight. Let's pretend we're invited. And that'll give us a perfect excuse to wear disguises. Yeah, smart idea! exclaimed Slingshot Sam. And what's more, it'll be a charity ball, which means they'll be collecting a pot full of money, and all the dames will be wearing sparklers. Just the kind of caper we're looking for. Now you're talking, pal. Right on. Meanwhile, our old friend Fred Flintstone was having a hard time choosing a costume. But he finally settled on a western getup. I reckon this here cowboy suit with a ten-gallon hat will do it just fine, partner. Yeah, ba da ba do. As he paid up and left the costume shop, Fred never even noticed the two criminal types who suddenly emerged from the back room. Don't move, Mac. Sam hissed at the shop owner. I got you covered. Tie him up, kid. And then we'll pick ourselves out a couple of good disguises. When Fred arrived home, he found his wife cowering in terror. Hey, what's wrong, Wilma? What are you looking so scared about? Take a peek out the window, Fred, and see for yourself. There's a big gorilla out there by our apple tree. <laughs> Oh, is that all? <laughs> What do you mean? Is that all? This is no laughing matter, Fred. Have you flipped out or something? There's nothing to worry about, Wilma dear. I'll show you how us Flintstone men handle a little old gorilla. As Wilma gasped in astonishment, Fred sauntered out to the backyard and tapped the gorilla on the shoulder. What's the matter, Barney? He joked. Doesn't Betty give you enough to eat? Take it from me. Those green apples will give you one heck of a bellyache, and they'll spoil your appetite for dinner tonight at the mass ball. The gorilla responded with a bellow that shook down a hail of apples from the tree, and suddenly Fred realized he'd made a big mistake. This wasn't his old pal Barney in a gorilla suit. He was playing upsa daisy with the real McCoy. Wilma, help! He yelled at the top of his lungs. Now, boys and girls, turn the recording over. Wilma grabbed the phone and called the police, but the gorilla slung Fred over its shoulder and leaped the fence in search of new adventures. The woman says the gorilla just snatched her husband, Chief. Last she saw them, they were hidden downtown. Hey, there they go now, Sarge. Both officers poked their heads out the door of the police station. Holy smoke, Chief! Said the sergeant. That ape's starting to climb up Rocky Pebble Tower. The chief of police clutched his head in horror. He wasn't sure just why, but he had a strange feeling he'd seen all this before, probably in a nightmare. Something tells me we'd better notify the Air Force. He gasped huskily. Fred was quaking with fear as his mighty captor scaled up the side of the skyscraper. Get me some bananas, quick! He yelled to an office worker through an open window. Anything to calm this big ape down and sidetrack him from climbing any higher. But the gorilla kept right on climbing, up, up, up. The pterodactyl fighter squadron zoomed in. One of the pilots dropped a cluster of bananas. The gorilla grabbed it and let go of Fred Flintstone. Yikes! Geronimo! Screeched Fred, petrified with terror. 
A crew of firemen held their breath, hoping they had their animal skin rescue net aimed just right to catch him. But in the nick of time, Fred managed to grab hold of a stone gargoyle. His boss, George Slate, hastily brought the dino crane to get him down. What a way to start the evening! Mr. Slate complained once Fred was out of danger. First some robbers break into the quarry, and now this! A break in at the quarry? Flint shot, and made up with a couple of sticks of dynamite, and some blasting caps! Too bad, boss. Fred sympathized. But as you just saw, I've been having my own problems. Wilma soon arrived in the car. Oh, thank goodness you're safe, darling, she gushed, giving Fred a big hug. It's getting awful late, but I brought your cowboy costume. If we hurry, there's still time to make the masked ball. Yabba-dabba-doo! cried Fred, revving up for the party. As they parked and started into the banquet hall, Fred glanced inside through the window. More monkey business! He snorted angrily. What's wrong now, dear? asked Wilma. Take a look! said Fred. Inside the ballroom, a man in a gorilla costume was covering the party guests with a slingshot, while his partner, disguised as a Tyrannosaurus, went around with a bag relieving them of their wallets and jewelry. Don't tell me there's two live apes on the loose tonight, fumed Fred. That's gotta be Barney Rubble in his gorilla suit, up to one of his nitwit pranks. Fred, are you sure? gasped Wilma, following him inside. Fred yanked off the hold-up man's disguise and suddenly realized he'd made his second big mistake. This wasn't Barney either. It was actually the escaped convict, Slingshot Sam. I've got the loot, yelled Sam's partner in the Tyrannosaurus costume. Let's get out of here. As he spoke, he tossed a sputtering stick of dynamite right at Fred Flintstone. Fred caught it, then froze with fear as the ballroom swiftly emptied. In fact, Wilma had already fled to call the cops. The blast shook the whole banquet hall. But luckily, Fred had ditched the dynamite before it went off. Phew! Where am I? In fact, who am I? Gasped Fred, looking dazed and all shook up. You're safe in my arms, dear, purred Wilma, and you're my hero. <laughs>